Hey, what's going on guys? Crow Sama here. And the Crow Shop just got a new shipment in. This time it's going to be the Massagrade Curios. Now, I will say, this is probably the least interesting design of the Season 1 Double O kits. That's a really subjective term. I know some people are probably like super excited about this kit. And honestly, they should be. This is a Master Grade. And Master Grade usually means it's it's really innovative, it's prestige, it's really good. So I'm very curious to see exactly if that all is gonna translate to truth. So without further ado, let's go ahead and do the unboxing. Okay, so the kit is fully built and done. Honestly, what are my initial thoughts? <sighs> I would say less than exciting. I really wasn't going into it with any large expectations and I don't really think I'm leaving with any big expectations or any big results for that matter. It's a good enough kit. It looks pretty cool, vibrant, but it really didn't meet that like, that mm, when it comes to building Gunpla. A lot of kits like the Master Grade Barbados as well as the Real Grey New Gundam, those are really enjoyable builds and I really, I just loved all the intricacies of putting the model together and all the little gimmicks that comes with it. But with this kit, there really isn't any gimmicks unless you want to call the transformation a gimmick. But without further ado, let's take a look at the kit in its entirety. And thank you to NewTypeHQ.com for sponsoring this video. If you want to pick up this kit and more, you can go to NewTypeHQ slash Krosama, so that way you can get 10% off your first purchase. But on to the details. So here is everything that's going to come in a box. 
Honestly, not a lot. You get a bunch of hands, you get a uh, adapter, you get a pilot, rifle, you get some grenade launchers, and a shield. So, yeah, it's a little bit lacking on accessories, but hey, that's the design of the mobile suit, so can't really fault it. So start with the head details. Now, I am going to just outright say a couple of things. One is I did not panel line this kit at all because I do plan to paint this in the future. So I did not put the stickers on. Uh, so yeah, just if you have any questions about that, it's because I am planning to paint this and I don't want to waste all those stickers because more than likely I'm just going to use them. I really don't want to get water slides for it. I'll just, I'll just suck it up and, and use the stickers. And second, a lot of my views on this kit is going to be my own personal bias as well as an objective view, but it's only going to be to the design and just like the appearance. But when it comes to the you know internal things like the engineering of the kit and the finer details gimmicks, that's going to be a objective view. I'm, I'm really going to you know take that bias away and you know look at it as a modeler. So with the head first, you are going to have the eye stickers, and you're also going to have that front camera sticker. Then you're also going to have that dark green sticker in the back. Now the head is going to be sporting like the little holographic film right here on the top of the head, and you're also going to have the clear green on the sides. Now the one thing I can say is I'm not a fan of that V-fin. I just think it looks really weird. It's a little bit too thick and too short for my opinion. Uh, it just it's a weird design however you got some panel lines in there a little bit uh, but I'm pretty sure that you as a model builder can just make your own panel lines if you really want to otherwise if you're gonna go straight build you're not seeing much of detailing when it comes to this head next we have is the chest uh, really cool looking chest this is probably my favorite out of all the first season kits I just really love the angles that the armor comes up I, I think it looks actually Pretty neat. Now you are going to have the gimmick of the cockpit coming down. And I know it's a little bit hard to see, but you are going to have the pilot fit it right inside there. Front piece is also going to be a clear green. You do have a little bit more of that holographic plastic right here on the sides. And for the back, you're not going to have the like traditional GN drive. It's going to be this little solid back piece. Now for the arms, there's actually a little more detail right here in the front. So this is something you can definitely panel line or if you want to mask this off and paint it a different color, you definitely could. This is all going to be one piece as well. So if you want to paint that off white or something, uh, I think that would actually look pretty good. Now look on the side, you are going to have this clear green piece. And the overall arm is not going to look too bad. It's a little bit, a little bit of a chunky forearm to be honest. And if you look on the back, you're going to have more of that holographic plastic film. Now looking at the front skirts, honestly, the front skirts look really good. You're going to have a little bit yellow up here, breaking up all the color. And the overall design looks really cool. I like the thrusters right here in the front. At least that's what I think it is. I think I'm pretty sure it's thrusters. I haven't seen anything in the you know manual that says otherwise, but these look like they're pretty much thrusters. So whenever he's trying to stop midway of flight, but um, overall it looks really good. You're going to have the back skirts, which are going to be really cool as well. And they kind of lock in right here in the back but we'll go into that when it comes to the articulation and working our way to the legs there's honestly a lot of detail that really makes this kit stand out with just the legs alone now up here at the top you're going to have more of that plastic holographic film on the sides you're going to have this just huge block of like gn thrusters uh this just points out it doesn't like move like rotate or anything it just stays fixed which is unfortunate uh then you're going to have these huge huge fins right here in the front um it's it's cool but it's also like really in your face it's super long and just it's out there now this has nothing to do with the master grade itself this has something to do with the design choice of this mobile suit so it's unfortunate but you are going to have some panel lines right here on the side of the legs so that's some really good color that you can put in there if you want to mask like these little edges off and paint only inside here maybe an off-white or a gray something like that um, that would look really good on this kit and these feet are some of the worst i've seen on a master grade to date uh it, it really has a little bit of a struggle standing up although it's not really back heavy it's just these feet are not really made well to just stand up uh, if, if it does stand up, then it might have some problems with if you bump into the table, the balance might go off and it'll fall. It happened to me multiple times, even though I had a very firm, uh, you know, standing pose on the table. And now for the backpack, even though it's not as much a backpack as it is just the cockpit, I would suppose. It's not really the cockpit, uh, but it's like the nose of the actual transformation, the flight mode. 
So it's a really weird backpack. Honestly, I'm not really, I'm not really digging it. I've never liked it. Uh, the transformation, it's okay, and we'll definitely get into that. But for the most part, uh, I don't like the way this kind of just like cones down at the bottom. And now for the articulation, the head is going to have some pretty decent articulation. It has like this little hinge right here that can move it back and forth. And it's also going to be on a ball joint. These shoulders right here can actually move out some ways. Now this is going to give it a really good range of movement with that shoulder. Obvious 360. Can move out about that far. This back piece is going to be on a ball joint. Bicep swivel. Two points of articulation here and here in the elbow. This front part of the wrist can actually move up and down. Hinge right here for the wrist and can rotate. The hand is gonna have fixed poses for the fingers, but the thumb is going to be on a ball joint. Now coming to the waist and the body, uh, the, the body can only move so far forward. There's not really much I can really do. I've been trying to like, kind of move all this out the way, fix it, but yeah, that's like the best it can do for a front crunch pose. Good side bend. It has this really nice like torso articulation right up here, and can move further at the waist. The front armor parts can actually open up. So I took the top portion off right here because there is a joint right here and sure enough, you can actually bend it all the way back. But let's see how that bend looks once I plug in the top portion. You see, basically it's going to be non-existent because the backpack is going to prevent that. Now obviously if you do that, you could get a little bit more, but you're gonna have to do a lot of configuration, which is going to be a little bit of a pain, but it can be done. And back skirts can also move around these ball joints. There's gonna be a little slot right there that you can plug it into, so that way it can actually stay fixed. Front skirts is gonna be on both a hinge and a ball joint. For the hips, this little part right here can rotate up and down. Leg can move out. Legs can actually kick pretty far, but due to the front skirts, you gotta like put it on an angle. Rotation at the hip can go back about that far. Now the knee is going to have multiple points of articulation inside here and here. The first one is going to give you a nice 90 degree bend, but then if you extend this part right here a little further, you're basically getting a 180. And these little front knee fins, these can actually pop out and they can go up and down. Ankle armor can move up and down. Foot can move pretty much back and forth. Not really too much side to side. It can rotate all the way around. This front armor can move up and down, as well as the foot. Then lastly, the backpack can move up and down, but don't really count that because it's supposed to be fixed, uh, and that's gonna be mostly for the transformation. So my thoughts on the articulation are, it's okay. It's nothing that's like groundbreaking. It's a lot of what we've seen with the Dynamis as well as just other masquerades in the past. Uh, but the lack of a proper ab crunch is really concerning. Maybe I didn't mess with it enough because I did actually take a lot of time to get comfortable with the kit before I did the review and I really could not find any point of articulation that made the ab crunch a little bit more like dynamic. So I'm just really guessing that there is not a joint in there that's going to allow it to move forward. Uh, unfortunate, but the kit is still fairly decent overall when it comes to articulation. Now let's talk accessories. You're gonna get a really decent sticker sheet, which once again, I'm not applying until I fully paint this kit. Then you also get an Alleluia Haptism Pilot. Some extra parts that are actually for the GN frame. That's what these runners are, just GN frame runners. So you get some little white parts right here and you also can get some inner frame parts, which really is not much to be honest. You get the closed fist hands two open fingers, hands for holding accessories such as the beam sabers, and lastly trigger fingers for holding the handles. And you do get a stand adapter that connects right underneath Kyrios, in which I'm going to be having him in the flying pose pretty much throughout the entire review. The first weapon we're going to take a look at is going to be the GN Beam Submachine Gun. Honestly, it's a fine weapon indeed. It's going to have gray and then you're going to have like this dark gray or black uh, barrels right here, as well as this little portion on the gun. This scope can actually slide up and down. And you do get two of these handles, and these are just going to slide right inside there. Now I did forget to mention, if you push this part down, there's actually a little lever right here that when you push this part down, it's actually going to pop it right back up so you don't have to forcefully pull it. Thank <laughs> you. 
The next weapons we're going to have are the Jinyan hand missile units. These are basically going to be two different configurations. One, you can plug this right into the top of the forearm, and the other one is going to have the little handle that plugs right in. And now hidden underneath the back skirts are going to be the beam sabers. Uh, they're fairly loose in there, so you're going to have to just like be careful. But I mean, obviously, if you pull it out accidentally, you can easily plug it right back in. So we're going to want to take that little beam saber out, plug in the beam effect parts, and then plug that right into the hand. And next we have is going to be the GN shield. This is a really, really cool shield for the fact that it can separate, well, it's a little bit loose right there, but it can separate and it forms a claw, which is pretty damn cool. Now with this claw, you can also fold this part up and slide this little knife part right inside here and then clamp down. So whenever you clamp onto a mobile suit, it's just gonna shoot out and just penetrate the mobile suit hopefully in the cockpit, eliminating the enemy very swiftly. And also this part can actually extend and rotate. Now underneath it, this part can move back and forth. So whenever you do connect it on the arm, you can get that little bit extra extension. Now connecting it on the arm is simple enough. You're just gonna plug it right inside there, or you can do the opposite end. It kind of really doesn't matter, just depends on your personal preference. Now for the GN drive on inside, this part in the back, this little condenser, this can actually pop out just a little bit. And then this part, if you just twist it, it can light up, but mine's a little finicky, so gotta get that sweet spot. And with that, the center of the chest will light up. All right, so let's go ahead and move on to the transformation sequence. Uh, basically, you're just going to be locking in this neck portion and you're going to bend down the little fin right here. When you're raising this part, make sure that that fin is going to go right into that slot uh, and it's going to poke out right in the back. And the bottom portion is just gonna lay flat. Wings are pretty much gonna spread out, raise these little parts, rotate these arms inward, and you're gonna to wanna to plug in these little adapters on the underside of the arms. And you have these little adapters right here that just poke out right on the side of the shoulder. And you're gonna plug this in, you're gonna rotate it up and then plug it right into the nose of the aircraft. Bring these parts down, rotate these legs outward. You're gonna take this part and you're gonna pop it out and let it fall. Rotate the feet and make sure they are flat. And you can also plug in the shield like so. 
Now on top of the legs, there's a little bit of a gimmick that if you push this little piece down, you pop those out. So that's a cool little gimmick. It doesn't really add much to the overall flight, but it looks okay. And you can also plug in the GN rifle right inside here. And here it is in its flight mode. It doesn't look too bad. It's, it's honestly okay. I don't really have any problems with it. I think it's a, uh, a fine transformation, very simplistic. The only thing is I do have a problem with this little antenna right here staying up. It just generally falls. Uh, other than that, it's, it's okay. I probably would never actually buy another one just to pose it in this transformation, unlike some of the age kits. I think the age two is one of the like better uh, transformations and I don't know maybe it's just a, a personal preference but yeah this is like an just okay I think it's too long for my taste but that it's okay this is also gonna have some landing gear so the crotch can actually bend down pull the scope out on the gun and you basically rotate these parts up right here and once you have the landing gears on it can actually balance itself on the ground it doesn't look really any different or any good it's just another gimmick so yeah that's pretty much it it's got landing gears now on to the question that so many of you had can it hold the dynamis weapon and i must ask before i actually show you if it can hold the weapon i need to know is this of any significance in the anime or any type of media because it's kind of astounding that so many people wanted to see it hold the Dynamis rifle. But nonetheless, let's go ahead and see if it can. And sure enough, it can. And that's largely due because it has the same exact frame and the same hand connections, so the forearm connections are actually going to be the same as well. But yeah, it can actually hold the weapon. Now what are my final thoughts on this kit? Honestly, it's very mm, okay. I don't really have any major problems with it. The transformation is super weak. I don't think it's really a cool idea, but this isn't the fault of the Master Grade. It's mostly in line with the design. I just don't think that transformation looks as cool as other transformations such as the Zeta or the H2. Now, the overall design isn't horrible. I, I think it's actually fairly cool once you get into some really cool poses. But without really putting in the cool poses, I think the design is very weak and amongst, pretty much amongst the season one, the weakest. It's not necessarily a horrible thing. I don't, I don't think it's really like a bad kit nor a bad design. It's just fairly average. So if you do want to get this kit, I'm pretty sure you already have it in your mind that you love the Curios. If you're feeling that you don't like the Curios that much, I'm going to recommend you to pass on this kit. And I don't normally say that, but I don't want you to pick up this kit because I put it in a lot of cool poses and you're like, oh man, it must be really cool. I don't want you to be disappointed. So maybe watch a couple other reviewers, uh, maybe look at online reviews, or you can just judge for yourself. However, I am going to say on my end, I think it is a very average kit. It doesn't bring anything new to the table in terms of the Masquerade line, and it just doesn't do anything new to the Gunpla line in general. But it does look kind of cool whenever you put in some pretty cool poses, as well as have him with his little boy band. So once a, uh, Virtue comes out, hopefully Virtue comes out next year, I'll get that one, and they will all be nicely together to complete my collection. But that's it for me, guys. Thank you all for watching, and I'll be seeing you in the next Gundam review. Bye-bye. And you are going to get a hallelujah. And you are going to get a hallelujah aptism. And you are going to get a hallelujah. And you will get an hallelujah. And you will get an hallelujah aptism. Haptism. You also get an hallelujah aptism. And you also get a hallelujah.